Hello, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh. Someone has stolen my seatbelt. A nice grey morning, isn't it? You see that tree over there, that log? I think we might have to cut that up for firewood. Might be the last time you see that. That's a walnut tree. That's a luxury, isn't it? Cutting walnut up for firewood. I'm going to go the fast way today because I'm a bit... I'm going in a bit later than I usually do. Because normally I take the kids to school on the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And of course they've broken up. But they still haven't put me in any patients. So I'm starting a bit later. So, my first patient's at 9.15. Oh no, this way is the big flood. You can see from the stratus that, uh, and the puddles that it's been raining here for the best part of the last three months. So, and there's a bit, uh, there's a flood coming up. And, oh, I better turn my lights on. It's a bit dim. And uh, you'll see, when we go through the flood, you'll see that it's all, uh, there's a curb on the left-hand side where they put a drain in to try and drain it and that hasn't worked, so. Anyway, I hope you're well. I uh, wanted to have a little chat with you today about artificial intelligence. Because there's a, been a development in the last few, the last month or so, which uh, I think it's going to have massive implications for everybody and it hasn't really appealed on the mainstream media yet and that's the emergence of this uh well the so-called chat bot which is uh look at all that wood over there we've got a local sorry to dive progress but uh we've got a local uh wood powered uh fuel wood wood fuel uh powered uh power generation facility on an industrial park called the, the Discovery Park up here, you know, where, where Pfizer's used to be, well, still are in a sort of vestigial sense. And um, it was more, you know, it was a triumph of hope, aspiration over realism. And so as a result, uh, it's not really, uh, you know, it's been broken down for, the, for a long time. But the wood deliveries have carried on uh, coming in I'm going to go through this really slowly. It's much to the chagrin of the car who's behind me. Who's going to get really upset, I'm sure. He's going to go through a top speed and get everybody soaked. Because a lot of drivers like going through those fast, don't they? They don't care about how much water they squirt up the underside of their car. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the wood's been piling up. You'll see a load more in a minute, and uh, they're not burning it, and it's just getting absolutely soaked. So what they could do is instead of putting it in the power generation machine, they should just give it away, just tell everyone who's got a wood burner, come and... And if they chopped it up, which they could do quite efficiently into logs, <coughs> they could um, just sell it as wood. And I reckon people would get more power out of it and heat more homes than they would from the turning into electricity rather inefficiently. Anyway, uh, this chat GPT is an AI powered uh, chat program and it's building on a legacy of uh, improvements in computer artificial intelligence. Oh, I've got a sore throat now. Ah! Oh dear. One of the nurses came down with COVID yesterday, so that's it now. We're all going to get COVID. Anyway, I'll, um, it's a significant breakthrough, and I'll just explain to you, but I'll need to set the scene a little bit. The um, Everybody remembers when uh, IBM produced a chess program called Deep Blue that was able to beat Gary Kasparov. 
and um, they uh, that was hailed as the rise of the machines. You know that that uh, we were going to have to become comfortable with our new robot overlords. And um, nowadays, uh, chess machines are sort of well accepted, uh, and they should be because um, they don't really pose a threat to us in the same way as. Um, an electric drill doesn't pose a threat to a builder who just wants to create a hole in the wall. Basically, um, I've seen how they used to do make holes in the walls before electric drills, and basically they just used to get a long spike and just keep banging on it with a hammer uh, until they create a hole in the wall, and then they would pack it out with something, like badge air or something, and put a screw in it. So. Electric drills obviously were, are a tool, and so and chess machines have become known as a tool and so now in chess tournaments for example they have proper tournaments for chess computers playing against each other and then they also have tournaments for humans and basically you don't mix the two and you know if you're found to be using a chess computer um, then you're you're banned which is fair enough um, and but this chat GPT uh, is capable of producing text in the same way as uh, about a year ago or so, six months ago, they brought out a program that was capable of creating pictures. Now, what you can do with this picture program is you can say to it, I want a picture of uh, uh, an English uh, country scene uh, with a windmill in the style of constable. Um, including uh, the Hindenburg in the background. And what it'll do is it'll just do it for you. And, you know, you can change your prompt a bit and, you know, you could do it in other styles or well, do it in the style of Matisse or using pointillism or whatever. And this has got graphic artists extremely concerned because uh, basically a large chunk of what they used to do, which was regarded as quite subjective and uh, relied on people having an artistic bent, uh, is now being done to the satisfaction of the consumer, which let's face it, okay, so they don't have a very high threshold possibly, but you know, good enough is good enough. So that's all your graphic artists and everything out there, you know, all the logo designers and everything, they're, they're staring uh, defeat in the face and uh, thinking about uh, retraining and now someone's come up with this chat GPT machine, which can now do the same pretty much for text. So if you say to it, I want an essay on uh, the uh, compare and contrast the Roman and Greek civilizations um, uh, with, with an emphasis on the use of um, naval warfare, then hey presto, you know, in pretty short order, you'll get a thousand words back or two thousand words back or whatever and again this is raising hackles in the academic community because it's it's going to be uh, difficult to separate what was machine produced and what was uh, produced through the added value of the uh, producer the creator and in the same way as, uh, you know, chess tournaments have trouble with people cheating online because they can't know how, how, how many of their moves were inspired by a computer. So, but I think the ramifications are far, go far further than this because uh, that's a fairly simple problem which requires the um, creator in their citations to say, that this work was produced wholly or in part through the use of ChatGPT using the following prompt. And they they would have to declare that, you know, because in the, and then if it was found that, that that had been the case and they hadn't declared that, then obviously they'd get into the, they'd be, you know, they'd lose their qualification. The, you know why he's so fast down the straights and so slow around the bends? Anyway.
But um, there, there are greater ramifications because this thing is far more talented than just producing a bit of text. I mean, you know, you, you could, I mean, we, <laughs> I have hummed and hawed over stupid stuff like uh, privacy policy. On your website, you have to have a privacy policy. And now, apparently, I can just say to ChatGPT, produce a 500-word uh, privacy policy uh, that caters for the needs of a private dental practice in the UK. And hey, presto. I mean, it may not be perfect, but the point is it's going to save me half a day's work because all I'm going to have to do is a bit of editing, uh, you know, and probably, you know, possibly moving a few, add, add a slight bit here and there, or subtract a bit here and there, uh, instead of having to create from scratch. So in a way, what this chat GPT is doing is it's giving you the the moulded article. It's It's got the dough and it's producing the statue and what you have to do is just start, finish it off. You know, just refine the eyelashes and perhaps change the shape of the foot or something. You know, which is fantastic. <clears throat> this thing's not just limited to text. I mean, you can ask it to produce a a congressional bill or a bill for presentation to Congress or Parliament that um, uh, reduces the speed limit to 65 or uh, uh, redefines the conditions for use of, uh, you know, ownership and use of shotguns. <clears throat> so it'll do all that. It'll write computer programs. You can say to it, I want a computer program that uh, <clears throat> keeps track of my stock. Or now I'm not saying now you might get you'll get a computer program that probably will work. And as they refine this thing and it gets better, things like that probably almost certainly will work. But as anyone who's programmed will know that having a computer program that works and one that works in the way that you want it to work is <laughs> it's two completely different things and sometimes these bugs can be very subtle but the point is that you know if someone's doing 90 percent of the work then what you can do is the 10 percent the danger is that uh, you put it in the hands of someone that doesn't really doesn't know how to do the other 10 percent and so they just think oh that's you know they they cut copy and paste this program and rely on it and of course it's got it's got bugs and it's open to exploits, but then that's a case of sort of do your own due diligence, isn't it? So, the history of computers and the advancement of computers, I think, is marked out by a few landmark uh, achievements. Um, computers were were designed originally on, you know, on uh, what they call breadboards, which were basically uh, computer baseboards where they would just put the mark out and, and put the transistors and the uh, and all the electronics and then sort of connect it up and, um, and then solder it all together. Then what then, of course, <clears throat> once they um, computers became sophisticated enough to hold an electronic representation of a breadboard, uh, then what they could do is they could then design the computers on the screen. And then the next jump really was that um, they wrote computer programs that assisted them to design computers. So not only did they hold a visual representation of the human design, but they actually assisted the humans by saying the, the layout would be better, always better organized or more tightly organized, and you can fit more transistors in if you, if you do it this way, because we've mathematically optimized the design and then that really then led to the um <clears throat> the rapid acceleration because what happened was as soon as a computer could design another computer then the computer it designed would then be even better at designing the next computer so you get like a a virtual circle where uh, computer design accelerated really um very quickly uh to the point where uh, the humans really were just now just using the computers as tools to to uh, improve in effect the tool that they were using so also um, we passed a sort of a watershed in terms of uh, graphics where we were able to put on screen 
things which are indistinguishable from reality. And if any of you watched any of the Marvel films and stuff like that, you won't believe how much of that. I mean, you know, it's all unbelievable. And it's all computer generated. So, and that was sad in a way. I thought that was quite a sad milestone because uh, up until that point, you know, it, it had all been very sort of uh, Thunderbird XL5 and uh, Super Mario Nation. And you could, you had to suspend your disbelief. So you knew what was real and what wasn't real, but you didn't really care. You know, it was all a bit of fun. And then you got to the point where you saw something and some people might have had an inkling that that was computer generated and other people would have thought, oh no, you know, <laughs> so they've, built, they've built a TIE fighter and they've shot it into space and filmed it out there, you know. Um, and of course, cinema has always had a, there's quite a long history of tricking people using mats and stuff like that, M-A-T-T-E's, uh, into thinking that, uh, you know, massive star bases uh, exist when they don't. But, um, you know, now we've, we've literally gone to the, got to the point where they can create um, humans, reconstruct humans and stuff like that. Uh, crowds in the Roman Colosseum and, and all sorts of things. Although the human humans have always been, because we're so good at recognising each other, and the nuance of uh, facial expressions and things like that, that uh, there's always been this problem recreating human faces because they've been one of the last things that they've mastered because we are so good at spotting what's fake um, because we are good at spotting each other when we are you know, being fake with each other. Um, we're very highly uh, skilled at that. And so there's a thing called the Uncanny Valley, which is the, uh, the, the, the gap between what's obviously fake and what's obviously real and uh but there's just this thing that just falls short it's just slightly better than obviously fake but but slight falls slightly short of what's obviously real and there's you try and go into that area and you'll you'll fail badly so <clears throat> i mean personally i don't see it necessarily as a bad thing because uh, one of the things, I, I like the old war films, Second World War films, and, uh, you know, Where Eagles Dare and all that. And a lot of these were made in the 60s, and the reason they were made in the 60s was because there was a ton of hardware still around from the war, planes and uh, old tanks and stuff like that, uh, that um, were in the process of being decommissioned, and so they could get their hands on the hardware. And, and then by the time the 80s and the 90s came around, none of this stuff was flying anymore, and so... Uh, um, so the, the big old war film stopped getting filmed but now you can re recreate a, a squadron of Spitfires or Lancasters or whatever digitally and pretty much realistically I'm hoping that we'll see a resurgence of, uh, of the tales of uh, Daring Do uh, in the second war but um, so I think this chat GPT is a massive uh, development. I mean, it really is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, hopefully today or over Christmas, I'm really going to look into it and have a little little play with it and see what it can do. Because I think in dentistry, it's going to be, you know, hidebound as we are by this new bureaucratic approach to everything. Um, this is, a, this is a, someone who's suffering from a, a bureaucracy. This is a dream come true. This is the clerk that will write all your policies for you, hopefully. You know, and uh, I might write your website for you and might write your shop for you or, you know, or, uh, but, or, or might write a proposal for opening a new surgery or might write a, a funding proposal to expand a group of surgeries or, um, you know, there is, it seems to me that there's a very real possibility that it will do all of that and more pretty much whatever you want yeah and at the moment it's got an iq of about 80 you know which is <laughs> for okay, that's pretty good and uh it's got um it's constantly being updated so i think as time goes by it will only get better and better and it's all in the uh public domain it's a uh, open uh, source program 
and it's trained pretty much on all of the human knowledge, you know, everything it can find on the internet. So that's it's a very exciting. I'm very. I am. Can you see here? I'm, can you see? I'm very excited. It's my very excited face. Um, so I don't think we need to worry too much. I mean, there may be a time at which uh, it will get to be more intelligent than us, in the same way as the chess games got more intelligent. They got better at playing chess. And it may be that these uh, programs will... Uh... Oh, you could smile, you know. I know your face is on upside down, but you could smile. You know, we'll find that, uh, and I'm sure, um, you know, they're already saying, asking it questions like, what's the best strategy? If I was Russia, what's the best strategy to win the war in Ukraine? Or if I was Russia, if I was Ukraine, what's the best strategy to prevent Russia invading my eastern border? Anyway, at least it stayed recording all, all the time this time, didn't it? That was weird. That was, I must have pressed the off button. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll keep you updated and let you know if it's any use from a dental point of view. I'm sure it will be. Okay, I'm off to work. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.